Welcome back to channel friends. This is Dr. Arkartik again doing MD medicine from MC. So in the previous video, we saw how JVP happens physiologically in conjunction with the cardiac cycle changes. So in this section, we'll be seeing the abnormalities of JVP and why these abnormalities happen in such pathological conditions. Okay, let's go. Yes. So as we saw, a wave is due to right atrial contraction. So any pathology inhibiting the contractility of the right atrium will definitely cause absent A wave. So what is that condition? Yes, it is atrial fibrillation where due to such increased heart rates, the atrium will just dance, fibrillate. It can't contract effectively. So A waves won't be produced. Okay, next is conditions where A wave is prominent and the same time it's excessively increased in amplitude that it is called a canon A wave. Okay, let's see the causes of it. See first the prominent A wave. See as we told as right atrial contractility increases A waves amplitude will also increase. So if there is any obstruction in the pathway of right atrium contracting. So that will increase the back pressure increased A waves. So what can it be there? This is the tricuspid valve getting stenosed. Okay. Tricuspid stenosis or any obstruction like uh, some atrial myxomas, right atrial myxomas. These tumors can also block the tricuspid valve resulting in exaggerated pressure from the right atrium leading to exaggerated A waves which is prominent A waves. Okay. Next. See how ventricular pathology can cause exaggerated A waves. See any obstruction in the outflow tract of the right ventricle like embolus, pulmonary embolism or where the arteries of pulmonary arteries are narrowed like pulmonary arterial hypertension. In those, these two pathologies, what happens is this right ventricular end diastolic pressure will be elevated because since it's contracting against narrowed blood vessels. Okay, so this end diastolic increased pressure will be transmitted through the atrium to the jugular vein as do, uh, during uh, this A wave production, this tricuspid valve remains op uh, open. So this back pressure is transmitted to the jugular veins, producing prominent A wave, even in case of right ventricular outflow tract obstructions. Okay. Yeah. Next is, can any pathology in the left side ca cause elevated A waves? Yeah. Let's see. Two causes. One is same left ventricular outflow tract obstructions like aortic valve is stenosed, severe aortic stenosis or the septum is hypertrophied, interventricular septum is hypertrophied and obstructing the left ventricular outflow tract. It is seen in hypertrophic obstructive cardiac myopathy. So in these two conditions what happens is the left ventricle contracts vigorously to pump the blood into the aorta at that time it comes into the right ventricular cavity and compromises the right ventricular cavity space. So less space, so whatever blood will be there, there will be more pressure will be there. So that contributes to exaggerated A waves. Okay, so severe aortic stenosis and even HOCM can cause prominent A waves. One we saw due to atrial pathology and one we saw due to ventricular pathology and one we saw due to left side pathology also. Yeah. Next is the interesting wave which is canon A wave. So this examiner's is interesting question. So what happens? Why is this canon A wave produced? See when atrium contracts the ventricle will relax and receive the blood. What? At some point of time if ventricles and atrium contract simultaneously what will happen? Just think the increased pressure from the atrium and pressure from the ventricle collide each other and that produces the maximum explodable pressure which is 
transmitted to the jugular vein as the explosive canon A wave. So when does this happen? See, when does this happen is when ventricle is contracting at its own rate and atrium is contracting at its own rate, then this pathology can happen at one point of time, both contract against each other leading to explosive A wave, which is canon A wave. So what does I'm, I'm trying to say, which is complete heart block, where the AV node is completely blocked, ventricle is contracting against its own rate and atrium is contracting against its own rate at one point of time collide each other. Okay. One more condition is, see, when the AV node becomes the pacemaker and starts producing impulses, which is AV node is the junction, junctional tachycardias. What happens in junctional tachycardias? This a AV node produces impulse simultaneously to the atrium as well as the ventricles. So atrium and ventricles contract simultaneously. The blood collide against each other, explosive wave, which is the A wave produced in the uh, cardiac cycle. So in the JVP, yes. So uh, canon A waves are seen in complete heart block as well as junctional tachycardias like AVNRT they will be saying. Uh, like we see in SVT, supraventricular tachycardia, as we will say. Yeah. So let's see an example of how these waves appear. Yes. Just notice the neck of this patient. See, this is sternocleidal mastoid. See, this part is the part where jugular vein becomes visible. See then that part, it explodes at each beat. So this is the canon A wave and can you see the regularity there? No, it is contracting at, produced at irregular intervals. So if it is irregular canon A waves, then it is complete heart block. Okay. Next is this example we will see. Next is this. Next is this example we will see. See here, as the tachycardia goes, see this here and as well as here, you can see here. See, as the tachycardia goes, see here, in between the two heads of sternocleidal mastoid, it is produced at a regular rate as well as it is an explosive wave, canon A waves. So this is AVNRT or supraventricular tachycardias. Okay. Yeah. Now we will see. Yeah. Now we will see the pathology with respect to extensant abnormalities. So how does extensant was produced initially? Extensant was. It's a relaxation descent. 